I'm really excited for this competition between the Dyson V11 and the Tinco Pure One S12 Plus. They are remarkably similar cordless vacuums, and each has their pros and cons. We put them through a grueling series of tests, including some brand new tests for vacuum wars, and this video will show all the results and pick a winner. So links in the description for current prices, and let's get started. I should mention before we get started that I was sent one of these, the Tenco S12, for free to do a review, which I will link in the description. But as always, the tests we do here speak for themselves and don't allow me much room to play favorites, even if I wanted to. So let's do a brief overview of the features of both of these vacuums first. They both sell for essentially the same price, but the Tinko comes with a lot more attachments. I won't go through them all here, but there are quite a lot. The V11 Torque Drive does come with a good set of attachments too, including the mini motorized tool for cars, stairs, or upholstery, but then again the Tinko has one of those too. The Tinko S12 Plus, the version that I have, comes with a soft brush cleaner head, which is absolutely brilliant for hard floors, as well as a torque drive head, which can do both hard floors and carpets. But the Dyson V11 only comes with a torque drive head in the US, and for whatever reason, Dyson only offers the soft roller package, called the Absolute Package, in non-US markets. You can buy a soft roller on the website separately, but it will significantly increase your investment. They both are similar in that the more expensive versions of each have screens which display a lot of useful information. And they're also the first cordless vacuums I know of that have a sophisticated automatic suction adjustment feature, though there are some differences there. For example, the Dyson V11 will adjust the suction based on if it senses you're vacuuming hard floors or carpets. If carpets, it will boost the suction, and on hard floors, it brings the suction down. The main benefit of this is that it saves battery life, assuming you have a mixture of hard floors and carpets. Like the Dyson, the Tinko S12 also automatically adjusts the suction, but it uses a dirt sensor to decide when and how much to adjust it. So for example, if you had dirty hard floors, it would adjust the suction up to clean them, where the Dyson wouldn't because it only adjusts the suction based on floor type. And conversely, if your carpet was not dirty, the Tinko would not adjust the suction up, which would save battery life. But if it was dirty, it would. You get the idea. I've said it before, but I think this idea will start showing up on a lot of premium cordless vacuums because it's a great way of optimizing performance. So the first test is some simple suction and airflow tests. We test the airflow with an anemometer on all three power settings and in various locations on the vacuum. The Tinko had a range of airflow from 26 CFM on low power to 43 on high. And that's a lot, quite a bit more than any lower tier cordless vacuum, but it's not enough to beat the Dyson V11, which had a range of 30 CFM on low to 59 on high, which is the most I've ever measured on a cordless vacuum. The V11 also has quite a bit more suction than the S12 at 111 inches, which again is the most I've ever seen on a cordless vacuum to date. This is not to say that the S12 isn't really powerful, it is, but the V11 is on another level in terms of power. The main place we saw the power on the V11 show itself was with the carpet deep clean test where we embed sand into a medium pile carpet and weigh the bins. Here the V11 actually found some hidden sand in the deepest part of the carpet for a score slightly above 100%, where the Tinko got 99%. It's important to note here that these numbers are pretty impressive. Cordless vacuums only recently got good enough to get scores this high, and even then, only the more expensive ones can do it. Another thing only expensive cordless vacuums can do is keep dust inside the vacuum and not in the air. Both of these vacuums are sealed systems with HEPA filters, which we tested with a 5 micron fog test, which they both passed, as well as with a special kind of test dust in a sealed room with a particle counter, in which they both got a perfect score with no statistical increase from the baseline. And that's rare with vacuums of any type, but especially with cordless vacuums. One new test I've been trying out is the hair wrap test, where I take one gram of 15 inch human hair and spread it over hard floor. Interestingly, only about two thirds of the hair made it to the dustbin on the Dyson, with the other one third getting tangled on the brush. The Tinko did much better, where about 95 plus percent made it to the dustbin, and only about 5% or less got tangled on the roller. In terms of pickup on carpet and hard floors, it was interesting. They both did about the same on carpet in that they were able to pick up everything we put down from very fine debris to extra large debris in both low and high power, though the Dyson required the gates to be all the way open to get the larger debris. On hard floors, they both did about the same with fine and medium sized debris. The V11, however, could pick up large debris on hard floors, but only if you kind of wiggled the floor head, where the Tinko could not pick up Cheerios or anything larger due to the torque drive head having a relatively small gate. 
On the other hand, the Tinko also comes with a soft roller, which can pick up pretty much anything you throw at it on hard floors. I did try our old V10 soft roller on the V11, just to see if there was any difference between the two, and I would say there really wasn't. Soft rollers are just the way to go for hard floors. I only wish you could use them for carpets too, so you wouldn't have to keep changing the heads. They also were really good with edge cleaning, both straight on and from the side. I couldn't really tell a difference either way. Probably one of the biggest factors is battery life. Here the Tinko S12 has the edge because it comes with two removable batteries, which give the best battery life I've seen to date. You also have to consider power output when judging battery life. So here we can see that the Tinko with only one battery gets 50 minutes at 26 CFM on low and 10 minutes at 43 CFM on high compared to 74 minutes at 30 CFM and 8 minutes at 59 CFM for the Dyson. And when you can effectively double those numbers for the Tinko because it has the extra battery, it really makes a difference. And of course you can use the auto mode on each of these units and optimize these already amazing battery life numbers. I think weight and ease of use is so important because with all that weight on the top of the vacuum like this, it can get tiring on your forearm, especially if you're vacuuming for long periods of time. And the Tinko is a full pound lighter on the arm than the V11, but the Dyson is really good at distributing that weight, so it kind of evens out. Neither of these vacuums has an Achilles heel. They're both super premium and deliver on both quality and performance. However, if it was me picking, I would place some additional value on the better auto mode, the more attachments and features, including the soft roller and the extra battery. Yes, the Dyson has more power, but at this level of premium vacuums, it's not that much of a difference. So links in the description and consider a like or even better a subscription to Vacuum Wars. And thanks for watching.